Hey, everybody. Welcome to our next presentation. Uh, Rob Butts is going to talk to us about cache and proxy configuration on the Traffic Control CDN. Uh, take it away, Rob. Sure. Um, so uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Rob Butts. I, I'm a software engineer on the Comcast CDN, um, and I'm a committer on Apache Traffic Control and uh, Traffic Server. So I would like to talk a little bit about uh, our cache configuration um, and and kind of how it's changing and what it's what it's going to look like going forward. Um, so I'll go ahead and share my screen. So. So. Um, Again, I'm, I'm an engineer on Comcast. Uh, if you want to contact me, rob at apache.org. Um, so for those of you who have been around for a while, the way you do cache configuration on uh, on Apache Traffic Control is with traffic ops ort.pl. Um, and that's how it's been for years. That is changing. So the new application is called T3C um, in ATC 6.0. Uh, Traffic ops uh, or t.pl will still exist, but it's just a shim calling t3c, and it will be removed in seven, the next major version. Um, we we've been working on this for uh, about a year now um, as a project, and I've got a link here to the blueprint um, if anyone wants to see um, kind of the the design and the intentions there. It's just on our GitHub. Um, so. So to begin with, again, for people who aren't familiar, a little bit of history. So for years and years now, that script, trafficopsort.pl, was how you deployed cache configuration on, on the CDN. Um, uh, originally, so ORT stood for Operational Readiness Test. So that's some uh, historical trivia now that it, I think it served that purpose for about five minutes. <laughs> And it quickly became how you deployed configuration and managed configuration on the caches. Um, originally, that that script was actually calling traffic ops, the the traffic ops kind of data monolith that we have, um, and traffic ops itself was generating that config. Um, a couple years ago, we changed that, and we actually wrote a script called. Uh, it was, it was my fault for giving it a terrible name, ATSTCCFG. Um, and what that was doing was the, the ORT.pl script would call that, and it would reach out to the standard generic APIs um, of traffic ops, and then it would do the actual generation on the cache side. Um, and of course, the benefit of that is we're reducing the monolith, right? We don't like monoliths. Um, we're getting, we're, you know, we're getting that that monolithic code out uh, of of traffic ops, we're, we're putting it on the caches. You can canary it. You know, if you, you want to test a code change or a config change, you can do it one cache at a time. Um, all the advantages of not having a monolith. Um, and so, with this change that again we've been working on for about a year now, and it's in ATC 6.0, um, we have this new TC3 T3C tool that is doing all of the cache uh, stuff. It's 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 replacing ORT.pl. Um, it's breaking it into small pieces, and the config is, of course, still done client side. And we simply renamed what was ATSTCCFG is now T3C Generate. Um, so, so again, it's a new tool. Uh, stands for Traffic Control Cache Config. We wanted a short name that was easy to call on the command line. Um, as I say here, it's ju currently just ATS. Um, uh, ATS is currently the only officially supported caching proxy on traffic control. Um, we kind of sort of support Grove, our own homegrown proxy. Um, but that's not part of T3C. It was never part of ORT. It has its own config generator. At some point, we might kind of integrate that. Um, and cache agnosticism has always been a goal of traffic control. And we would like to be more agnostic and, and support other proxies. And so maybe we have a T3C apply Nginx or a T3C generate you know, varnish in the future. Um, but today, it's still just ATS, and that hasn't changed. Um, so going over the goals of what we've done in the last year, um, again, this is all kind of in the blueprint. But the primary goal was to break it up um, so that the, the ORT.pl script itself was a monolith. And so we wanted to break up that monolith. 
uh, again, for all the reasons you break up monoliths, so it's easier to work with, it's easier to understand. And the way we decided to break that up was Unix style, POSIX style stuff. Um, and that's not based on any kind of theory or religion, right? It, it's a very, there's a very practical reason we wanted to do the Unix style stuff. And it's really just to make it easier to work with. Um, we, we want it to be easy to learn, easy to work with, you know, reduce the, the, the ramp up costs, you know, a CDN and traffic control in, in specific are, are incredibly complicated things. And so anything we can do to make that easier to work with is a, is a huge win. Um, so the goal here, again, easy to learn for Linux system administrators. The goal here is is for an organization with an ATC CDN to be able to just hire someone off the street. And if they know Linux, hopefully they can very easily pick this up. Um, it, we also want it to compose with other tools, um, right? That's that's the Unix style of you, you compose and use pipelines in your shell. And we wanted that to be the case as well so that it's as flexible as possible. You don't have to rewrite pieces of it if you want to do, you know, one of the many things that it does. Um, so, so real quick, going over the tools, and, and I'm going to demo these in a minute. But the tools that we, so part of the process was identifying what are the things that ORT.pl is doing, and how can we break those out? What are the independent things? And this is what we came up with. Um, and again, there's no hard hard rule here. This was just what we identified as these are the things it's doing. So T3C apply, which again I'll demo in a minute. T3C apply is the tool that replaces ORT.pl itself. Um, if that's all you care about, you know, you're an operator and you just want to deploy cache config, that's probably the only thing you're ever going to really care about and, and be calling. Um, it T3C apply replaces ORT.pl. But T3C apply itself is calling the other sub apps. So we have T3C check, which itself works like the main T3C app and is uh, doing sub calls to check refs, which checks references inside config files. So that's one of the things ORT.pl did, um, is it makes sure you don't reference a config file that doesn't exist. Um, we also have check reload, which says, OK, I've got these config file changes. Do these changes mean I need to do a reload of traffic server or a restart or neither? Um, and so that's its own file. That's its own application now as well. Um, we do a diff of config files. We present that diff to the user. Um, we could almost just use the standard POSIX diff or get diff or something like that. But we do have a little bit of semantic uh, data we want there. You know, we want to exclude comments and not not have a, a diff if only comments have changed. Um, so so it was worth giving it its own app. Like I said before, T3C generate is what is actually generating that data. It takes as input the traffic ops API, uh, delivery services servers, all of that API data, um, and turns it into ATS config. Um, and that was uh, a little bit of modification, but mostly renaming what was ATS TCCFG, if you've, if you've used that in the past year or so. Um, Pre-process then takes the config files that were generated, and we do a little bit of pre-processing. So that's things like replacing a, a all caps, you know, host name with the actual host name on on the machine. Um, there's a number of things like that that we've always done in in traffic control and ORT, and T3C pre-process now does those. Um, the last two are what communicate with traffic ops itself: T3C request and T3C update. Um, again, these could almost have just been curl, but just had a, just enough stuff to be worth doing themselves. You know, you if it was curl, you'd end up writing a bash script, and we might as well do it in Go, where we have things like strong typing. So T3C request is requesting all of the data that we need to generate config and and other things. You know, have you queued updates? Um, and T3C update is what unsets or sets the up. In fact, it only ever unsets the update flag of this. Does the server need update? Right. We apply all the config and then we unset that update flag. Um, and those two could all, all also have been combined, but we really wanted to isolate the requesting data versus mutation. Right. You sort of have a guarantee that T3C request will never mutate data for safety, um, and then on the update does that. And so again, I'll look at those. Uh, right now, actually. Um, so so let's actually look at these running and, and how we've implemented them, and I guess sort of what they look like. Um, so here I have a VM where I have T3C installed. 
um, if, well, actually, just to start out, to, to build it, um, it's the same way you build any of our stuff in uh, traffic control. You use PKG, uh, PKG cache config build, or if you just do PKG um, to build all of traffic control, it will build that. So here's my VM. And I already have it installed. Uh, and in fact, let's look at where it's located. So OOT used to be in opt. We've moved that to standard uh, Linux standard base uh, file system hierarchy standard locations, user bin. Um, uh, that may be the only place that actually puts stuff. So, so T3C and ORT before it are applications that you run. And the way you'll usually operate them on the CDN is to run them with something like, say, Ansible Puppet Chef or uh, a cron job, or you could write a systemd file to run it periodically, um, anything like that. So we don't actually put things uh, with, with the packaging that we do in traffic control in, in any locations. But we'd, we'd certainly encourage you to put, put things in you know, var log, um, Traffic control cache config is, is the name of the RPM. Um, we also have, let's see. Uh, so we put a few things in var lib, traffic control cache config. Again, we've just tried to put it in the standard Linux locations so that anybody who knows Linux hopefully already knows how to work with it. Another thing that we've done um, is to create full man pages. You can type man t3c, and it's a full man page. In fact, let's look at where that comes from. So that's actually being generated by the readme files, um, which you know we always make trade-offs. So these readmes in GitHub aren't as pretty as they could be because they're actually being turned into man pages. But it's the same file, um, and it's it's in man db. You could do man k traffic ops, and man would find these applications. Uh, So yeah, let's let's actually look at them. So so to kind of explain how they work, again, they're in the path, they're in user bin. Um, and you could change that if you really cared. You could make your own RPM. It wouldn't be too hard. But T3C, so so again, we have all of these sub apps. So the way we've structured them are like a number of Linux apps that are similar, like Git. Um, Git does this if you do things like Git diff or Git rebase, things like that. Um, uh, MKFS is another one. MKFS, you know, if you call with, with a file system, it actually calls MKFS.ext4 or what have you. Um, so what we have here, T3C, um, is is its own standalone app, and you can call T3C apply, you know, with a space, and the T3C app will will it actually replaces itself with uh, execve, um, which is the right answer there, I think. Um, or you could just do T3C apply. Um, and directly call it either org. Um, and so like we see here with the man, uh, these are these are the sub apps that we just went over. T3C apply, check, diff, generate, preprocess, request, update. Um, and T3C check itself is the same. It's also a set of sub apps. Uh, so let's look at the full call. So again, if you're an operator and all you really do want to do is just run, you know, you don't care about the details, you just want to apply config. Um, then the thing that replaces uh, the thing that replaces your ORT call is T3C apply. Um, the flags are a little bit different, but uh, so we have dash VV um, again trying to follow existing tools for for verbosity. Um, another incidental change is we now do backups with Git. Um, so so if you pass dash git equals yes, it will make a git repo in the config location, uh, Etsy traffic server, instead of making you know files that I forget what we used to do. It was like temp ORT and named you know uh, remap.config underscore one or, or something like that. Well, we're just doing a poor re-implementation of git. So let's just use git. Um, we we have a few more flags. Uh, so run mode is is the old ORT mode. Um, if we actually look at all of these flags, we, we, we went through very recently, just in the past few weeks, and added flags for everything modes are actually doing, um, which will hopefully make it a little bit clear what the, 
Um, if you're new to, to traffic control, T3C, what used to be RT, has modes of um, badass basically says apply and, and force everything, just generate and force everything on, on the file, whether or not there's a, a flag um, in traffic ops saying to do that. Um, the typical mode you would run uh, run in production would be sync DS. Sync DS uh, says to traffic ops, uh, is the queue flag set? Has somebody said they want to apply config? And if so, go get it and only apply the changes. Um, there's also a report mode, and there's probably a couple, a couple others I'm forgetting. Um, and then we can override the host name, which I'm going to do here because my VM doesn't have a host name. Um, so I, I'm just going to go ahead and run it. Uh, so I'm I'm sourcing the credentials, and this is actually our nightly development environment, and this is a host that's in it, and. I'm just going to run it, and you can see it run. Um, it's using the logger that we use in most of traffic control. Um, you can see info warning errors. Um, I passed the no package flag because I happen to know the package is going to break because it's not in yum on my VM. And you can see it's a lot of info. Uh, I, I passed dash VV, um, and you can see some of the things it was doing. So we we wrote files. You know, there's there's a key file here. Apparently, there's some header rewrites. Um, this should be relatively familiar uh, if you've run ORT before, and we can look at those. So I have traffic server installed in opt. And this file was was placed. Um, so again, if you're just an operator, you just don't want to run. Um, that's probably all you care about. But let's look at some of the more interesting things that you can do. So, so again, part of that breaking things up into Unix-style apps is was composability. We want to be able to do independent things. Like like maybe I don't want to run the full app or the full report mode of ORT. Maybe I just want to see what is the remap.config going to look like. Um, and in fact, this is one of my favorite commands to show off, just to show off uh, what what it can do now, you know, to show off the, the composability. And so this command here, um, what we're going to do is we're going to, again, get those credentials that need to go to T3C requ request. So this is the request app. Again, this is going to call T3C dash request to request the data from traffic ops. So we're not calling apply. We're not doing all of that stuff that T3C apply that replaces ORT does. We're not placing packages. We're not you know, checking diffs. All we're doing is calling T3C request to get data. I'm passing get data equals config, which is the flag that says, give me all of the data I need to generate config, which delivery services servers. It's most of the data in traffic ops. Uh, I'm giving it this host name, because my system host name is not what I want. And I'm unfortunately passing insecure because our nightly environment certificate is broken at the moment. Um, so I'm doing that. I'm generating the request. And then I'm going to pipe it, standard Linux bash pipe, to T3C generate. Right. So again, I'm not calling a single app. I'm, I'm requesting the data from traffic ops. It's going to spit it out in a, in a JSON format, actually. And then I'm piping that to T3C generate, which is going to generate the config files for me. Um, and it looks like my terminal is getting cut off a little bit. Let's see if we can see the end of that command. Yeah, so so the only other thing I had to pass it was dash dash dir for the directory. Uh, for the directory of traffic ops, um, because Formerly, we used to require location parameters in ORT um, in traffic ops for every config file. We now try to infer those. And if they don't exist, we have to have the location. And so T3C apply is going to read this from the system where ATS is installed. But T3C generate doesn't know anything about that, because again, it's a standalone app. So in order to generate with any location parameters missing, and I know we have some that are in our nightly environment, um, I'll pass this. Um, so I've done that. I've generated config files. And then I'm going to pass it to JQ. Um, the generated files are JSON. 
both T so T3C request is JSON, of course, because it's getting the, the data that's JSON from traffic ops. Um, T3C generate also spits out JSON that we'll see in a minute. Again, we were really trying to make this as, as Linux standard as possible. And the command line really, you know, works, you know, all the tools on the command line cut uh, said awk, all of those tend to work with new line and space delimited files. Unfortunately, we just have a little too much structure and we tried several things. We tried my multi part and it wasn't really any better than JSON. So JSON isn't quite as, you know, command line y as we would like, but we had to have some kind of structure and it's, it's a relatively simple structure. So generate's going to spit that out. We're going to pass that to JQ and we're going to select the remap.config file. Um, and again, it's JSON, there's some metadata, so we're going to use JQ and get just the text field. So in a nutshell, what this command is doing is we're getting the traffic ops data to generate a config, we're generating configs, and then we're using JQ to get just the remap.config. Again, as each of these is an independent step, we could do one at a time. Uh, I also passed dash S silent, so it's not gonna log anything until it hopefully succeeds. <laughs> um, and there you see, with one single pipeline bash command, I got, this is a live generated remap.config for ATS, um, which again, I, I think is pretty pretty neat. Um, so let's see some of the things this is doing. So let's actually take out the text. In fact, let's just take out the, the remap.config. Let's just use JQ for formatting and that's it. So now we can see um, this is, we're calling T3C request and then generate um, and getting the raw file. So this is what T3C generate spits out just natively. Um, and again, T3C apply, which is what you'll use. And this is our nightly, so these certs don't actually matter. I'm not exposing secure things, I promise. Um, pipe it to less. So T3C apply is going to be doing this under the hood. Um, in fact, you know, T3C apply, you could almost have replaced with a bash script, right? That's all it's doing is it's calling these things and composing them and doing what we care about. Um, so, so this is the raw output of T3C generate. You can see we've got file names, where to put it, the path, uh, content type, which can matter in some cases, the line comment, which again, we'll use for things like excluding that in the diff, um, and then the, the files themselves. And so these are, uh, config files. Um, in fact, this looks like records.config. Um, and so again, taking one step back just to show the entire process, let's remove the generate. JQ for formatting and less. So now we're just requesting from traffic ops. We're requesting all of the data that we need to config. Um, again, this is almost just a, a shell script around curl. Um, and now we can see servers. Maybe not delivery services. Anyway, this is all the data that we need to config. Okay, these are, these are parameters, um, and that's just what T3C request did. So, so yeah, that's really that's that's really it. Um, Again, uh, we we broke up the config. Um, it was it was a lot of work over the past year. Um, I, I did some of it and I helped with the design, but you know it was other people: John Rushford, uh, uh, Brian Olson, Joe Papano. I, I think Evan helped some. Um, and it was it was really a team effort on the project to do this rewrite and to to get our cache config generation in a better state, a more composable state, and hopefully it's more flexible. And if you if you need to do things, um, you can you can uh, you know do them without having to like modify the source code or something. Um, since I have a little bit of time, one one thing I'd like to mention real briefly is so one of the things that we did as part of this rewrite was to remove the dispersion flag. So again, if you're familiar with ORT, um, dispersion was a flag you could pass to it that would sleep for a random interval. Um, and we did that to reduce load on traffic ops because for large CDNs, traffic ops can't handle the load of thousands of caches checking in all at the same time. And there were reasons we had a flag um, back when ORT took uh, minute, minutes to run, um, which by the way, on a large CDN, ORT used to take like 15 or 20 minutes to run. T3C now takes a, under a minute. It's close to like 20 seconds, I think. 
Um, and so, so now there's not really a reason to have that dispersion flag um, built in. Um, you can, right, we're trying to, to make things composable. Um, so there's really no reason not to just, in your, again, your Ansible or your, your cron job or your, your, your system descript, whatever you're running cache config with, there's really no reason not to just sleep and pipe that to T3C. Um, and, and there was a very concrete reason to remove it. It was, it was actually a lot of code because you can't run multiple instances of the config generation at the same time, ORT or T3C, because they're overriding the same files. But you typically want to do revalidations on your CDN more quickly because um, they need less data so TO traffic ops can handle the load better. Um, but because you can't run more than one by doing the dispersion, now we need to sleep and periodically wake up and run the reval. And it was just a lot of code that was kind of a mess. And you know, all code is, a, is potential bugs. So there was a reason to remove it. Um, so again, really, there's no reason you couldn't just sleep randomly. Um, I would like to briefly mention what we actually do uh, is this. Um, what is this? So dispersion was random. If you were using ORT.pl with dispersion, it was just randomly sleeping. But anytime, you know, anytime you're operating a system like a CDN, it's always better to have determinism. So, so what I would suggest if you're operating a T3C CDN, instead of sleeping randomly, um, if you do this, what this is, what you're looking at is a quick bash um, to do a consistent hash. So what we're doing is we're taking the host name. In fact, I can echo this. We're taking the host name. We're piping it to MD5. Um, we need a secure hash, even though we don't care about security, we need a secure hash because we want something that is uniform. And secure hashes are guaranteed to have a uniform distribution. Um, then we're truncating it because that's way too long to do arithmetic with. Um, I cannot stress enough, if you are using a secure hash in any kind of actually secure context, you cannot truncate it. If you truncate a secure hash, it is no longer secure. Do not ever, ever do that if you actually care about the security. But we don't here. So we're truncating it, and then we're mod modding it by however long we want to disperse all of our runs. Um, you know, say say you wanted five minutes as three hundred seconds, um, and then you get a number, and that's always going to be the same for this particular cache. Um, so again, it's just a little easier to operate. Uh, if something goes wrong, you can all, you can answer the question: When is this cache going to run, or when did it run? Um, you always know it's always going to be the same because it's a deterministic, consistent hash instead of random. Um, yeah, I think that's that's really about all I had. Um, again, we've we've broken it up. We've hopefully made it easier to to work with and easier to develop. You know, smaller components. It's almost like microservices, but for an application, it's micro applications. It's it's the Unix style. Um, so I guess uh, does anybody have any questions? Let's see. Unshare my nested screen. Yeah. Uh, Alan, you have a flag to pass. Yes. Um, so right now. You can you, right now it attempts to read it from the RPM or the system if it can, and you can also pass an override. So it would be convenient if it could read the traffic layout directly from Apache traffic server. Um, is there a future where config location params are a thing of the past? So in the past couple years, we we have added location inference. So what we said in the config generation is for any config file we know needs to exist, remap.config, parent.config, we, we, we simply say, OK, we know this is the config of traffic server, Etsy traffic server, wherever. And we know this file has to exist. And so we're going to assume it exists, and you don't need a location parameter. Um, the problem is we we can't always know that. So so for example, um, maybe you have an SSL server name, or maybe you're using ATS seven, and maybe we could figure that out, um, but maybe not. Um, 
uh, another example is anything dynamic. So, so we have the ability in Apache Traffic Control to dynamically place any config file by placing a location parameter in Traffic Ops and then placing parameters for that file. So you can literally put anything you need. And that gives us a lot of flexibility, especially in unusual situations. Um, so I think location parameters or some form of them will probably always exist. But that said, we would like to make the inference smarter. We, we'd like to infer more things, and, and we can probably do that, and, and we'd like to. Uh, why pipe instead of and, and? So I was piping output to output, right? So, so if you were doing, again, for the dispersion, you would do sleep, or you, you, you do sleep rand, or sleep consistent hash, and then and, and. Um, but for T3C request pipe to generate, I'm piping the output of of, of T3C request, I'm piping that output to T3C generate to do the generation. Um, oh, I, I must have done a mistake. It should have been sleep and and. Sorry. Um, yeah, we're not we're not using the output of sleep. Um, so yeah, I guess any any other questions about uh, ATC can cache config generation. Um, Yeah, and, and again, there's a lot of things to do in the future. So I, I, I probably should have had a future work slide. So um, like I mentioned, we'd like to have more cache agnosticism. So we'd like to support, you know, T3C generate Grove, T3C generate Nginx. That's, that's definitely on the list. Um, one of the things I didn't mention is we are still using the library. So if you go to github.com slash Apache slash traffic control, um, the the actual generation of the config files is done with a library, a lib ATS CFG. Um, and that has not changed. We did that when we first made the config cache side, um, and it's still the case. So if somebody wanted to write, say, say they don't like that it's a, a standalone app, they want to write a, a service or a service to do anything. You know, maybe you want a service to generate config files or a long-running service to, to poll. Um, traffic ops and say, you, you know, what, what, what does this look like? Um, or, or even just write your own, t you know, maybe you don't like our T3C generate, you want to write it your own in, in Python or something. You, well, the, the libraries go, but we have a library. It, it is in Go, but um, it's all still a library. So, so theoretically, anybody could use that library. Um, is it tied to ATC release schedule? So currently, yes. Um, that's a topic in and of itself, but we've had discussions in Apache Traffic Control about creating separate repos, not just for cache config, but really for all of our components. Um, at the moment, cache config tends to move more quickly than a lot of other components in ATC. So, so we at Comcast at least tend to deploy it much more often than the releases. And, and there's not really a clear cut indicator to other people. Um, you know, anybody could do that. We just happen to do a lot of development on it. Um, so it would be kind of nice, you know, it, it would be nice if we could say, okay, we have a, a, a cache config release. Um, e, uh, you know, e even though the rest of ATC is months away from release, we just happen to, you know, move quickly. Um, so, so that may be something we do in the future, but today they are, it is tied to the ATC release. Uh, And in fact, that's something else that I kind of forgot to mention. I should show if I can. Um, so, so we did move the location. So I can share my screen again. Um, so I, I briefly looked at it, but uh, again, if anybody's interested in the code, let's let's look at. So here's uh, GitHub.com Apache Traffic Control. So if you've used ORT in the past, ORT used to be originally under Traffic Ops. So it was under Traffic Ops, and there was a Traffic Ops ORT directory. Um, we later moved that to the root, and it was traffic control, uh, traffic underscore ops underscore ORT. Now the app lives in cache config. Hopefully it'll stay there for a while. Hopefully that is more obvious, and you know anybody looking for how do we generate cache config will hopefully find it more easily. Um, and again, all of these sub apps are here. This is where all the code lives. Um, 
Although, as I said, also, if you're interested in the library, it's in our root GitHub lib uh, ATS, go ATS CFG. And this is where all of the functions that actually take the, the generic traffic control, traffic ops data, and generate uh, ATS config files live. And they're all make something, make cache.config. So again, if you wanted to write your own application to do really anything with ATS config files, um, you could do that. We have a, a, a library for it. So yeah, lib ATS CFG and traffic control cache config. Um, Uh, any other questions? Thanks, Rob. Thanks.